Good morning, ducks. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the duck adventure for March the 31st. Pouring rain outside. Doug is not interested in going outside, but I'm surprised he's in the kitchen. My eyes are so burning this morning. I did a little too much uh, typing yesterday, looking at a computer screen. Hopefully this is going to end soon. Anyways, uh, pouring rain, guys. Um, <laughs> uh, they're calling for 60 millimeters of rain. That's how much rain they're calling for. So it's just going to be a, just a soaker day. Um, I've got to get the uh, the truck unloaded. I've got, I'm hoping, uh, I don't think I'm going to get to Roberts today. I'm thinking that uh, tomorrow, but I, I've got to get it tomorrow. Like absolutely tomorrow I have to go to Roberts to get straw because this weekend it's like, well, they're, now they're revised the forecast, minus 14. Actually, minus 14, minus 13, minus 16. So we've got you know three really cold nights, so I need to get some more straw for the barn, for the ducks. It's a big rainfall warning. You click on the link and there's like a whole bunch of water coming. Click on the radar and it's just solid green. So I'm gonna get my edit done and uh, try to stay focused on the ducks today. That's the plan. I'm gonna get the uh, patio stones out of the truck, get some work done around here, and maybe, maybe we will make it to Roberts today. Uh, who knows? We'll see how uh, it goes today. I do have to straighten the garage out. I made a mess in there, so I've got to I've got to get that back organized because we're gonna need the garage shortly to make turtle snapping turtle cages. Are you ready to go out, Doug? Let's go. I wonder if this is the same uh, geese that were here last year. Okay, I'm doing this in Braille, guys, because I can't see the viewfinder with my blurry vision. They're about 50 feet on the other side of the uh, pen. Where's the other one? There is the other one. Oh, there's, it looks like three of them. I think there's three. Actually, I see it. No, there's, holy mackerel, guys. Okay, we got more than three. It's looking like we got about six or seven in the swamp here. Sorry about the jittery action here, guys, but zoom. And, uh, and handheld uh, camcorders don't uh, give a very good picture. There's at least six down there. Unbelievable. I have never seen this. I have been here since 1995. And I've never seen this. I can't believe how close they're coming right into the yard. Actually, I'm gonna try to. Work. Oh, there's another bundle. Okay, this is crazy, guys. All right, we got Canada geese all over the swamp. I have never seen this many birds come this close to the the yard, and I'm standing here talking to you, and they're not taking off. It would be so cool if they stayed, like we know we had one batch that stayed last year and had babies and then you know I think the snapping turtles got them. We need to have you know like a half a dozen Canada geese staying here for us to get a chance to have uh, you know a whole bunch of goslings running around maybe coming right into the yard. I know what I'm going to do when I go to Roberts to get uh, uh, straw I'm going to buy some scratch grain, scratch grain um, like I did last year and pour it in the swamp so they have something to eat. Get them come in more and more into the yard. <laughs> right on. Well, let's do a recon. I gotta go to town. And I've I got a couple uh, positive eBay things to take care of. Let's do a recon. Well, let's see how close they'll let us get to them. So I wonder, you know, if any of those are from last year. But I did count a total of nine. I don't know what's there right now, because I ran up to the house and got the camera. They're not afraid of me, because I'm walking around in the yard doing chores. They moved about maybe about 30 feet deeper into the swamp, and that's it. 
and it looks like two or three on the other side of the lake. It's a really mild south wind, but it's supposed to be just a, a ton of, uh, of rain coming. They're calling for like 60 millimeters, just uh, 50 kilometers north of me, 30 miles. Uh, some serious rainfall. South of me, the, the weather station is not calling for near as much, but uh, it's really, really mild. It's hard to believe that uh, we've got this Arctic front that's blowing in this weekend that we're going to have three days. I think it's minus, the, the temperatures have been revised. I think it's minus 15, minus 14, minus 13 are the three nights. I got to get straw for tomorrow so I can just load the barn up again and that way the ducks have a place to, you know, get inside and out of the elements. Okay, I got to find Bumblefoot Duck because I want to mark her better with the purple spray just so I can keep an eye on her. There she is. Okay, don't run, duck. Whoa. No, no, relax. Let me get some more spray on you. Just so I know it's you. There. Now we know that's her. I just want to keep an eye on because her her uh, leg looks like it's a little bit bigger today. And if she continues to swell up, I'm going to put her back in the hospital. I just can't believe those geese aren't leaving with me walking around here. Usually, you know, they, they take off. Oh, they're mating fights. Okay, egg recon. All right, what do we got in the mess here? Nothing there. It poured pretty heavy last night. It actually woke me up a couple times. Oh, bunch of eggs over here. No, oh, oh, I can get my arm in. I'm wearing a different jacket today. It's so warm out, I can't believe how nice it is. I can't believe how nice it is and what's coming. That, that's the part that's so, uh, like we're talking 25 degree temperature swing. Because right now it's 13 degrees out. And we're headed to minus 12 to minus 14. This will probably be the last blast. That's usually the way it works, is we get uh, that final blast of winter. And then it becomes uh, spring. Close his door so the wind doesn't catch it and wreck the hinges. Okay, so we got three so far and two more. Oh, two Muscovy eggs up here. Oh, another Muscovy egg. Oh, we got a bunch under here. So five in here. Two more. And two here. Okay, let's go to the barn. Oh, the feeder is really stripped, guys. They cleaned it right out. What are you barking at, Doug? Oh, sitting on the deck. You're not venturing too far, are you? Oh, Doug, fur up over birds. Look at your fur. <laughs> what a dog. Oh, you. He's so tough for birds. All right, what do we got in here for eggs? Actually, it's pretty dry in the barn. I'm, but that just shows you how they're not coming into the barn right now. The weather's so nice. Eggs galore. Oh, goose egg. Two, three duck eggs and a goose egg in that one. Oh, oh, look at this. This Doug just left us. Tension span's really short right now. Look at this for a tiny little egg. I bet you that doesn't even have a yolk. 
usually when you get those little ones like that, it's just egg white. Or a robin came in here and laid an egg, which I doubt that. Okay. Oh, pounding the eggs out. Yeah. As soon as this weather uh, changes, get stripper outside, clean the back shed out, start working on getting the hatcher set up, the incubator set up, and then maybe uh, get a really early start. Start loading up maybe, you know, maybe as early as the 10th of April. Start putting eggs in the incubator. Go for a really early hatch. Oh, I did a pretty good uh, dent in that feed. All right, I'm gonna go get some feed. They're not coming in here very much. Okay, let's get some feed. Okay guys, this pail, I, it feels like the heaviest pail I've had yet. I don't know how many eggs are in there, but it's seriously the heaviest one yet. It's like that's a good haul of eggs. I don't understand why Doug is not going down to the swamp to check out the can of geese. He's looked at them, but he's not interested in them. But he is looking at the sky, so I don't know if he thinks that the uh, the geese honking are above us and he doesn't realize they're down in the swamp? Oh, the geese are walking up the creek. They're not in too much of a rush to leave if they're walking. Okay, fill up the feed in the shed. The ducks are seriously embracing the uh, metal shed here. They're barely going in the barn. Well, just some of them are to lay but not a lot of eating action. Okay, I think they're coming over to eat. They're getting awful loud outside the door. Oh, it's some females and a male. Well, Doug saw the geese walking uh, down the creek and didn't care about them. You don't care about the can of geese, do you, Doug? Absolutely no interest in them. Yes, I just brought feed in here. Muscovies are doing the infamous wait inside and ambush girls. They're their sneakiest drakes. You know, the other drakes don't do this. Only the Muscovies, you know, I don't know if it's because they're lazy and they just don't want to chase the girls. But they seem to be the only ones that do this, you know, stalker routine. Waiting inside the corner of female. Get the rake. Much easier taking the patio stones out of the back of the truck with the rake. Oh, they're flying over top of the house now. Oh, there's Doug. <laughs> what a dog. <laughs> they're leaving us. Doug quickly gave up. They're going back to the deck. Yeah, that's where he's going. Sit on the deck. Doug's getting trolled by these big ravens. He's not liking it. <laughs> Look at him go. But you know guys, this is really good that he gets trolled like this because it makes him run around the property barking. And you know, if a predator, a land predator, like a, like a, you know, a fox or a coyote was you know sneaking up on the property, with Doug running like that sporadically around the property and into the bush and the things like this, what he's doing right now, like he's hell bent and barking. You know, a predator is not going to, uh, you know, he's not going to come towards the yard with a dog running around doing what Doug's doing right now. So the crows, the ravens, you know, everything that flies over top, the blue jays, the red-winged blackbirds, all inspire Doug to do a better job at his job. Somebody mentioned I should shoot a crow. 
to get them to stay away. Well, the crows don't cause, cause me any problems. And during ducking season, Doug does this job and keeps them away. Actually, nothing lands in the yard if Doug is out here. Because as we know, Doug doesn't like things that fly. Even if they're Muscovies. <laughs> Just look at them going. This raven is just flying back and forth, driving them nuts. Another one. You see, there's two of them circling the property. <laughs> oh, man, this is so funny stuff. You getting some exercise, Doug? Okay, I gotta get back to work. I just went in to uh, hit the uh, upload button. And the uh, internet weather says we got thunder showers on on the way with this massive dump of rain. Oh, better close the door. Doug, no, you're covered in mud. You're not going to the front of the truck. The first thing you'll do is get up on the seat, won't you? Because my seat is the best place to be when you got muddy feet. <laughs> Doug, you're running your face off today. Good exercise. Lose that extra winter fat you got. So the reason I've got the rake is so I can slide the patio stones out without having to go inside. These patio stones, they're a little more expensive than the hardware store. They're about $1.50 more than the hardware store, but they're over three eighths of an inch thicker. They, uh, I've never had one of these crack on me like the hardware store ones do. They're uh, a much tougher, thicker. I think it is the concrete's uh, a more high pressure too. I think that's why they're a better stone. But they also cost more money because you can buy them at the hardware store for like six bucks where it's like eight dollars or seven ninety or something. It works. I think it's a dollar sixty five more or it's six fifty at the hardware store. I just know it's worth spending the extra money buying them from the concrete place because every one I buy from the hardware store breaks the first year gets a crack I think the, even the weight of the feeder cracks some of them that I had my uh, my first year so I don't bother buying the hardware store ones anymore last one I'll put these in position after the deep freeze this weekend because I think next week is going to be a warm week and I can put them into place over there. I think I should have bought 12. But hey, I can go back. Well, I'm back in the garage. I'm gonna clean up uh, basically all the duck stuff I've been throwing in here all winter. Um, but I've got uh, a parcel that uh, was left at my gate today. When I got home, it was sitting there uh, by FedEx, but uh, um, <laughs> it wasn't the, the end of the world. They actually put it on the right side of the fence, the inside of the fence, so it couldn't be seen from the highway. But this is a product endorsement, guys. Um, I, I, I've bought a lot of uh, cheap electric heaters over the, uh, uh, the, the years, and they never last. You know, you see them like $29, $39, and, and they just never last. All made in China garbage. And I stumbled across this brand two years ago, and they were double the price, but they were actually made in Canada, like actually made in Toronto, Ontario. And I, I, I had the warranty card and I filled it out and I sort of put a lot of really goofy things on the warranty card and the owner of the company phoned me because he was like concerned about the warranty card the way I filled it out. It was all a joke but I was just shocked at you know the service and this was two years ago. So I bought another heater because one of my Chinese heaters died and I bought another one in the uh, in the fall and it died. And I was like really surprised because I've been using them for two years and, and the other one worked great. And then this one died basically four months into its life. I've already boxed it up. There it is. But I, I emailed, the, and this is on Easter weekend. I emailed the company and the owner replies back because I filled the warranty card out. So they actually have a, a record of me. I, he emails me back and says, no problem. We'll send you a new one. I like, and this, this I'm like, this blows me away, guys. I'm, I, I don't believe this uh, the service. Like, the company's name is Seabreeze. The owner is Arthur. 
And it's a family business. He's had, it actually, I think it was his grandfather started it. Now, I know when I talked to him, I had a really good conversation with him. And, you know, he's finding it tough because then competing with the made in China stuff. And a lot of the big chains won't carry his stuff because it's too expensive. Is that like Canadian Tire or Walmart won't touch it? And it turns out in Canada, home hardware carries it. That's where I bought it. But you can buy it on Amazon. He has an Amazon outlet uh, to buy it. One, I can't believe the amount of heat that comes out of them. Um, it's got a really a low draw fan on it so that it, it produces a real 1500 watts of heat because it doesn't waste any energy on the fan. But I can't believe the service. And inside this box, there is a return tag to throw the other one, the used one that doesn't work, back in and send it back to them. Like total unbelievable trust, customer service. I can't say enough good about this company. I'm blown away by it. Um, one, I couldn't believe it on the weekend he replied to my email. Like it was, uh, and it was his personal email that he replied back from the company website when I said I had the problem. Amazing company, guys. I'm telling you, if you're looking for an electric heater, and this, and I know he sells North American wide, you know, you can buy it on Amazon. You probably could find it in some stores in the States, but I know in Canada it's Home Hardware carries his brand, and they make really good uh, circulating fans. Actually, I have one uh, that I use on my heater in my garage here, but for heaters, they're amazing. They work great. They're quiet. They produce a ton of heat. And the fact that they got a two-year warranty and you, you know, you email them and they send you a new one and then you send this one back. And here's the best part, guys. Well, it's not the best part. The best part is the, the service I got this weekend. But after two years, because everything in his heaters are made to be repaired, it's old school stuff. It's, it's actually really, really old technology uh, when you look at the inside of it. But the thing is, because of the old technology, you mail the defective heater back after two years when your warranty's up, they'll repair it and send it back to you. And they've got a price list of all the re to repair the parts. And it's like, it's ridiculous. Like, uh, like the heater wasn't cheap. It was $79. But if you listen, if it dies after two years, you can replace the heating element or the, 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 the fan motor or, you know, I, I think the most expensive part is 20 bucks plus shipping. So you get your heater back with it repaired and they gear they warranty i think the repair for a year like i said it's old school stuff man like everything is meant to be taken apart and fixed but we'll open the box here and i'll give you a, a view of what the actual heater looks like nothing special guys but i'm just blown away by the service considering all the crap that i've gone through as far as service is concerned it's not very often you get a manufacturer that's that directly steps up to the plate and takes care of you all right so let's take this apart and or the open the box and i'll show you what it looks like One other thing, guys, if you do buy something from them, you know, buy on their Amazon store or, you know, directly from them um, or from, you know, a, a store that carries their product, fill out the warranty card because Arthur reads every one of the warranty cards that come through because so few people fill them out. The guy, I don't know if he gets a kick out of reading them, but... I, I wrote like some crazy notes like, you know, that the, the box was wrecked and there was feces all over it and things like joking around because I wanted to see uh, if I, anybody even reads these warranty cards. So it was pretty bad what I wrote on the warranty card, uh, the condition of the box and all the little questionnaires. It was right out, right out there and that's why he called me originally. But if you buy something from them and, you know, you fill out the warranty card, say hi to Arthur. I write right down there, hi, Arthur, Matt sent you. And, uh, you know, he'll probably remember, well, I, I think he's remembering me because uh, uh, I, think, I think I'm the only one that sent in warranty cards saying that the boxes were covered in human feces at the, at the hardware store. So maybe you could use that, use that line, the box was covered in feces and he'll know it was, I'm the cause of the sale. And I'm not getting any referral fees, guys. I just can't believe the service. I'm, uh, I'm just blown away. You don't get this very often these days. I didn't get everything I wanted done in the garage. Close, but no cigar. But I'm beat. And it's, come on, like, turn on, there you go. It's an absolutely gorgeous night. It feels like a summer night. It's, you know, it's almost 10 o'clock and it's still above 10. Forgot my jacket. Got my jacket. Yeah, when I got home and, and got into the garage, it was cooler than this. It's absolutely gorgeous. Ducks are uh, totally enjoying the night. Except we got a burned out light bulb on the front of the barn here. And a burned out bulb in the back of the shed. So I've got to buy uh, some new bulbs.
So the ducks are not totally cash with uh, not as much light as normal. And don't forget to like the video and share it with your friends and enjoy the show.